Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Okay, so along with the half a dozen new Zen 2 based third generation Ryzen processors, AMD has also released an additional two Ryzen 3000 series parts, and they're using the Zen Plus architecture, though you would be forgiven if you miss them. I'm of course talking about the new APUs, the Ryzen 3 3200G and Ryzen 5 3400G. To date, AMD is yet to sample these parts, but as we did with the Ryzen 5 3600, rather than sit around waiting for AMD to provide the goods, we went out and bought it with the help of our Patreon members. So the 3400G has been sitting on my desk for over a week now, so I thought it was about time I got around to testing it. We are yet to purchase a 3200G, so this one will just be a look at the flagship APU. When compared to previous models, the upgrades are pretty straightforward because AMD is using the Zen Plus architecture. These parts are manufactured using the 12 nanometer process, which offers improved clock speeds and thermals. Also helping with thermals is an upgraded box cooler, at least for the 3400G, which now gets the Wraith Spire, and this is a 95 watt cooler. The 3200G still keeps cool with the base model Wraith Stealth. The 3400G also does away with the thermal paste interface material. This means it's soldered just like the big boy chips. The CPU cores have been overclocked by 8% from 3.9 GHz to 4.2 GHz, while the Vega 11 graphics engine comes clocked at 1.4 GHz, and that's a 12% boost from the previous model. The final improvement AMD's made has been to the all-important price. Whereas the 2400G sported a $170 US MSRP, the 3400G starts at just $150 US. Now, for testing, I'm using the MSI B450 Carbon Gaming with 16GB of G-Skills Flare XDDR4-3200 memory. I won't be covering these APUs from every single angle like I did for the 2200G and 2400G, as most of the information, such as memory scaling, is still relevant from our original testing. So if you're after that kind of information, then please check out our original coverage. For now, I just want to see what difference there is between the 3400G and 2400G. So let's jump into the benchmarks to find out. First up, we have Cinebench's R20 multi-core test, and here the 3400G provided a 9% performance uplift from the previous 2400G model, largely due to that 8% increase in clock speed, and partly due to the improved IPC performance of the Zen Plus architecture. It's also worth noting that the R5 3600 is 81% faster in this test, while only costing 33% more, though it does of course lack integrated graphics, and we'll talk more about that later on in the video. We also see a rather large 10% improvement in single core performance, and again this is due to not just the increase in clock speed but also the improvements made by the Zen Plus architecture. This placed the 3400G on par with the R5 2600X, and this time we see that the R5 3600 was just 15% faster, as it's not able to utilise those extra cores in this test. Memory bandwidth performance is much the same. Zen Plus did improve memory latency, but as you can see in terms of memory bandwidth, both sustained a transfer speed of 36 gigabytes per second. The 3400G was 10% faster than the 2400G in the 7-zip compression test, and while that is a decent little performance bump, in a world where 6-core processors are now commonplace, it doesn't look that impressive. AMD's SMT implementation is very efficient when it comes to decompression work in 7-zip, and as a result, the 3400G did beat the Core i7-7700K, and wasn't a great deal slower than the 6-core 6-thread 9600K. I've tested Premiere using two configurations, one with the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, the standard graphics card used for all our CPU testing, and then one using the integrated Vega 11 graphics for GPU acceleration. With a highly capable discrete graphics card, the 3400G is actually very impressive in this test, completing the render in just 629 seconds. However, without a discrete graphics card, it took 1,762 seconds, and that's not so great. So, if you were going to use this processor for video editing and encoding, buying an entry-level graphics card would be the way to go, or better yet, just get the R5 3600 and pair that with an entry-level graphics card. The 3400G was just 4% faster than the 2400G in the Corona benchmark, and while that made both much faster than the Core i5-7600K, they were slower than everything else. Similar margins are seen in the Blender Open Data benchmark. This time the 3400G offered a 6% performance boost over the 2400G, and both trailed the 7700K. When it comes to power consumption, the 3400G still sips power, pushing total system consumption just 10% higher than that of the 2400G, and this meant system usage was 10% lower than what we saw with the 7600K. 
Moving on to operating temperatures, and here we see when running the blender stress test that the 3400G peaked at just 58 degrees using the Wraith Spire box cooler. Out of the box, it sustained an operating frequency of 3950 megahertz, and when enabling PBO plus Auto OC in the Ryzen Master software, that frequency didn't change. Then when testing with F1 2019, the 3400G ran much cooler, despite the Vega 11 graphics now being in use. Here the CPU peaked at just 45 degrees and ran at 4025 megahertz. Then enabling PBO plus Auto OC pushed the operating temperature up to 48 degrees, and this time we did get an extra 100 megahertz bump in the operating frequency. Before jumping into the integrated GPU testing, let's just quickly see how the 3400G stacks up against the other CPUs when comparing performance with out a GPU limitation. Here we see at 1080p it's faster than the Core i5-7600K and not a great deal slower than the 6-core 12-thread R5-1600. Moreover, it provided an 11% boost over the 2400G. The 3400G is even more competitive at 1440p, situating itself between the R5-1600 and 1600X, so not bad for a budget processor. Performance in Battlefield 5 was also respectable. For example, the 3400G mimicked the 1% low performance of the Core i7 7700K, while the average was only slightly down on the R5 1600. This time the 3400G was up to 10% faster than the 2400G. We find a similar story when testing with the Division 2. Here the 3400G offers a 7% performance increase over the 2400G, while trailing the R5 1600 by a 10% margin. The 3400G is still 8% faster than the 2400G at 1440p, but now it is able to close in on the 1% low performance of the R5 1600 and 1600X. Now this is a pretty impressive result, and at first you might think the 17% performance uplift over the 2400G is a mistake, but I assure you it's not. The improved cache and memory latency of the Zen Plus architecture gives the 3400G a big advantage in Far Cry New Dawn. So much so that it's now able to match the R5 1600X. The margin does come down a little at 1440p, but even so, the 3400G was still 12% faster than the 2400G, and once again managed to match the R5-1600X. Okay, so now it's time for some Vega 11 iGPU testing, and here we see a mere 5% improvement in performance over the 2400G. Certainly nothing to get excited over. That said, the good news being that the game was highly playable at 1080p, pushing well over 60fps at all times. Next up we have Rainbow Six Siege, and here the 3400G was up to 8% faster, but again both APUs performed very well, rendering over 60fps at all times, even at 1080p. Of course we're using the lowest possible quality preset, but this is of course integrated graphics after all, so that is very impressive. Fortnite also plays well at 1080p, but unfortunately the 3400G offered no real performance gains over the older 2400G in this title. We also see a similar thing in Far Cry New Dawn, despite the CPU side of the 3400G being much more punchy in this title, the Vega 11 graphics with its small overclock don't help here much. We also see next to no difference in Strange Brigade, the 3400G provided a few extra frames, but that was it. Once again, a similar story is seen when testing with F1 2019. The 3400G is only good for a few extra frames, but at least the game was playable, even at 1080p. Now this is very interesting, World of Tanks sees a 14% performance improvement when upgrading to the 3400G. This is a title that benefits from the Zen Plus improvements, but also isn't necessarily GPU bound when using the integrated graphics, so it's a rare situation where the improved CPU performance can be utilised in game with the Vega 11 graphics. When AMD released the first Zen based APUs back in February last year, it really was an exciting time for those products to hit shelves, and that was because at the time graphics card pricing was just crazy. It was heavily inflated, and that was of course due to the cryptocurrency mining. Hell, even if you were prepared to spend the three to four times more than you should have on a graphics card, the shelves were completely empty, so buying one was near on impossible. The 2400G and 2200G gave desperate gamers on a budget an alternative. These APUs let you play games now, albeit with low quality visuals, but they gave you the ability to play now and then upgrade to a discrete graphics card later on once pricing settled down. Today though, we have no such issue. The second hand graphics card market is thriving and you can buy a brand new Radeon RX 570 for as little as $130 US and it will enable a vastly superior gaming experience. It's really like comparing chalk and cheese. Still, the APU option is cheap for those buying new hardware. The Ryzen 5 3400G costs all of $150 US. 
Having said that though, I feel like in today's market, it is a bit of a niche product. And I realize APUs are a bit niche to begin with, but I feel like that's even more true of the 3400G, given what you can buy for not much more. For example, if your primary interest is gaming, a Ryzen 3 1200 for $65 new with an RX 570 for $130 or a secondhand model for $60, that's a significantly better gaming combo. New it costs just 30% more and you'll see over 200% more performance. But if you're willing to shop secondhand on the graphics card, the combo will be cheaper than just buying the 3400G. Also, for heavy productivity work, the 3400G isn't really a cost-effective option either. Rather, you're better off just getting a Ryzen 5 1600 for $105 and then pair that with a dirt-cheap discrete graphics card. You better get something for the $45 that's left over. If all you want is a basic PC for office-type work, then the 3400G is a suitable choice. Likewise, if you're building a compact home theater PC and gaming isn't the focus, then again, the 3400G is quite a nice option. Beyond that though, you really are better off with the alternatives I just spoke of. And even then, you can't really ignore the 2400G because right now that can be had for $100. And given that the 3400G was never 50% faster, I myself would probably just go out and get a 2400G and then pocket the $50, save that and put it towards a better graphics card in the future if gaming is your focus. And that is going to do it for this one. Like I said, not a full-blown top-down coverage of these new APUs like we did originally. We looked at how they perform on different motherboards, how memory scaling works. I don't even know. There were so many tests, I can't recall them all. But yeah, we're not going to do that for this one. It was really just to see how much better the 3400G is compared to the 2400G. And I think we've, we've done that. So yeah, not too much more to say. Perhaps down the track, we'll do some updated testing with the latest updated drivers to see how the 3400G handles itself in a wide range of games. Definitely something we could do, but yeah, right now we have a lot of other content that we want to cover, uh, such as the, the Ryzen 7 3800X. Tons of you guys are requesting that. I've ordered one. It's making its way to me slowly, so I'll test that when it comes. I've also purchased a Ryzen 5 3600X, thanks to our lovely Patreon supporters. We've been, we've spent well over a thousand dollars on these new Ryzen processors because we don't want to wait for AMD to sample them whenever that may be. So yeah, 3600X versus 3600, that'll be coming soon to see if it's worth spending the extra money. 3800X versus 3700X, that's also coming. Uh, and yeah, we may also buy the 3200G and do some testing with that as well. Anyway, plenty of testing to do, so I better wrap this up and get on with it. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the work we do at Horrorboxed and you want to make sure that we can purchase whatever processes that we, we can't get sampled, then yeah, jump over to our Patreon page, you can support us there, and there's a whole heap of awesome, awesome perks as well. Thank you for watching, I'm your host Steve, see you again next time.